Hi, and welcome to this edition of PLM 411. I'm Jim Brown of Tech Clarity. Today I'm joined by Laurent Rains of Autodesk. And uh, we're going to be asking and uh, attacking a, a tough question today. Um, should startups be using PLM? And uh, I appreciate you joining me. You're in a really unique position. You've been a startup. You're now uh, part of a team, the Ember team uh, at, uh, at Autodesk, operating in a startup mode. Um, Maybe you can just tell us a little bit about, uh, maybe start with what is Ember? Ember is Autodesk's 3D printer. We were acquired about two years ago in a alpha prototype stage. And over 12 months, we went from alpha prototype to an engineering validation stage in NPI at a contract manufacturer in San Jose. At 18 months, just recently, we went to full production run on the Ember. So it's been quite an adventure and quite a quick, uh, a quick road. Yeah, when well, Autodesk is really starting to move more into the production side of things, the, the create side, as you say, um, very strong traditionally at conceptual and, and designing, um, but now moving into the production side of things, Pier 9's I think a good example of that. Um, maybe you can talk a little bit about that. Absolutely, Autodesk has been a leader in helping people imagine and design anything that was in their minds. And the step of going from the uh, 3D model that you create to an actual finished good was a step that was at some times missing. And really with Spark Initiative, the Ember Project, PLM 360, these are all tools, and Dell Cam for that matter, these are all tools to help people come to a finished project product that you can hold in your hands that's no longer just a computer model. Yeah. You, you also get into a lot of the, uh, the nitty gritty and dirty things that happen in the create side where you have to uh, revision things and start working with suppliers and how, how did you manage that early on in terms of you know what were your products and uh, you know bills and materials and, and that sort of thing? Early on we we're managing uh, our entire bill of materials using Google Docs and using Excel spreadsheets. And the big issue with that is as you start getting more and more suppliers, we're close to a hundred some odd suppliers at this point, um, and having approved vendors, unapproved vendors, people you have on do not buy lists, Tracking all of that in Excel and cross-referencing it becomes very, very difficult. Your spreadsheets break and you get lost. Additionally, as you're versioning different assemblies, making small adjustments, um, that again is someplace where it's very easy to, uh, for one engineer to send something to a supplier without actually having a full check off on another engineer, getting things mixed up. With PLM 360, we can have a very clear approval flow, making sure that everything that's getting sent out has been approved, is correct, and ultimately, despite the boredom of filling out forms, it does save us considerable time and it saves us considerable money in errors and aggravation. Uh, hardware is unlike software. Right? It's hard and physical. Errors hurt. They cost a lot of money. The amount of investment that goes into creating a mold or spinning out a, a line or anything like that is very, very high. Uh, you want to get it right the first time. And you want to make sure that you're giving yourself the space that you can shimmy things over one way or another without uh, without being completely committed, but at some point you will have to commit, pull the trigger, and you're going to be making 1,000, 2,000, 20,000 right. pieces. There's no returning them. Yeah. So, you know, the big question then, um, you know, you and I have talked that even, uh, even for a startup of two people, um, you, you would say, you know, suggest PLM, and we've done some research that actually shows that sort of the traditional view that PLM costs a lot of uh, money to implement and takes a lot of time. It, it can, don't get me wrong, but our research shows that it doesn't have to. Um, but I think a lot of people would say, wow, two people, um, you know, using PLM, but I've heard you say that. So maybe you can talk about that a bit. As soon as you're collaborating, even if you're collaborating outside, if you're a single person, you're going to have to communicate to contract manufacturers, you have to communicate to suppliers. Uh, so I'd even say, even as a one person in a startup, 
using PLM 360 is invaluable. Keeping all that information in your head, unless your product is incredibly simple, right. is going to be very challenging. So unless you're looking at only one or two parts in one product, I highly recommend using a PLM system and PLM 360 has an advantage of being cheap and on the cloud. Um, it, it's really important to have a process, get the things down in the system, locked in so that you're able to look back and you can see the history of your product, you can see the history of your versions, you can track the orders that you've actually sent to your contract manufacturer or to suppliers that may be manufacturing sub-assemblies for you even. Uh, makes it invaluable. Great, well, so we've heard it from uh, somebody that knows startups. Laurent, thank you very much for joining Thank me you. Today.